Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's current affairs class. So guys, I hope all of you are aware of our live courses for RBS, EBI and NABAT. This is the timetable. If you want to know more about the course, you can go to our application as well as our website. Also, we have launched the crash course for NABAT. So if you want to uh, know more about the course and anything, if you want to know, uh, know about or buy the course, then you can go to the app and website. So guys, let's begin today's video. I hope you have the PDF with you, which is on the Telegram channel. So uh, if any one of you don't know about the Telegram channel or the PDF, let me tell you that the PDF of this session is already provided to all of you on the Telegram channel at this moment of time. So download the PDF, keep it beside you and then understand what I'm teaching you. Okay. So let's begin with the first question. Where is India developing the BMC 11 concession program uh, project? Okay. So here the right answer is Gazi. So this is again one of the many projects that India has been developing in different parts of the world. So it is in Brazil, it is nothing but an oil, crude oil exploitation program that India is running in Brazil. So which company of India is running it? First of all, it is being run by the Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited's subsidiary. Okay. So here, what is the news? The news is that the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has approved the additional investment into this project. And the investment is of rupees 1600 million dollars. So guys, this is also a huge amount that India is planning to invest in this project. Now understand the subsidiary which is controlling the project. So the subsidiary is Bharat. Petro Resources Limited. It is a wholly owned subsidiary of BPCL. Just give me a second. Okay, so this is uh, the fact. Now, guys, the authorized share capital. Now, this is an altogether another decision taken by the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs that the authorized cap uh, share capital of the Bharat Petro Resource Limited should be increased by 5,000 crores and the additional 5,000 crore will be entirely invested by the BPCL. And why has the government done that? In order to increase the equity stake that BPCL holds in the BPRL. Okay, so basically it's a round round thing. So don't go into too much of its depth because again, at one point of time we are saying that it is the wholly owned subsidiary of BPCL, then what is the need to increase the equity of BPCL in the company? So here, don't go into that. Just understand the, that the authorized share capital of BPRL has been increased from 15,000 crores to 20,000 crores. So that is the news. Okay. And here is an additional fact about the project in Brazil, which is expected to start from 26 to 27. Again, not a very significant uh, fact from exam point of view. Now, this is important that in the project, the BPRL owns 40% stake and the Brazil company owns 60% stake. Now, which Brazil company? It is Petrobras. So this is the national oil company of uh, Brazil. And from here, only one question can be made that Petrobras is the national oil company of which country? So there, Brazil would be the answer. So do remember. Now, guys, this is the data that I have drawn out from the World Bank's PDF. So this tells us about the GDPs of the country. So if you see that India is at the sixth position in the world. Yesterday only, when we were discussing about the gross NPAs of different countries. We saw that Russia is at the one position, then India is at the second position. And in the list, we did not feature Brazil. Many times we do, we do not find Brazil in, uh, in a crisis situation, you can say, okay, because it performs better than India in various social economic parameters. Then why uh, or what is the need for India to invest in Brazil? So here the need is uh, very evidently uh, revealed by the GDP data. You can see that Brazil is at the 12th position when it comes to the overall GDP or the economy's worth. Okay, so here obviously we are six uh, positions ahead of Brazil and we are 
वे मोर स्ट्रॉगर एज फार एज द जी डी पी इज कंसर्न ऑफ आर कंट्री देर फॉर इंडिया इन्वेस्ट इन कंट्रीज लाइक नेपाल भूटान साउथ अफ्रीका एंड अफ्रीकन कंट्रीज एंड योर साउथ अमेरिकन कंट्रीज लाइक ब्राजील सो हियर इन दिस लिस्ट यू कैन सी वी हैव फोर कंट्रीज आउट ऑफ द ब्रिक्स वन इज चाइना इज देर ब्राजील इज देर रशिया is at the 11th position and do remember this is the 2021 data and of course you need not to remember the gdps unless or until it is of india so india ka to aapko pata hi hona chahiye because it is released by the world bank first of all and this is the latest one okay 2022 ka bhi nahi aaya so us perspective se please remember the gdp of india and as far as the positions are concerned you can clearly see us is the one okay so we were talking about brics brazil russia india and china these are among the top 20 countries south africa stands at the 31st position when it comes to the gdp okay so that is the additional information that i wanted to share with you i hope you must have liked this fact okay soon india is going to take the third position as far as the economy is concerned maybe in the next decade okay next question is which state has signed an mou with the northeast space application center Shillong for implementing 21 development projects, including disaster management and resource mapping. So here, guys, Tripura is the right answer. Now it's nothing uh, much complex here. It's just that an MOU has been signed between Tripura government and the Northeast Space Application Centre, which is based in Shillong. And since it is a space application-based center, obviously these twenty-one projects would revolve around the space applications that will help the state of Tripura in various aspects. Okay, and you can clearly see that two of the most important aspects are mentioned here: disaster management and resource mapping. So, in order to develop the applications, ISRO is going to help. ISRO is going to help in developing the. uh applications and northeastern council is going to provide the funding or uh, you can say every kind of support that is needed for these 21 projects that is all about this news third question is noida based national institute of speech and hearing and apj abdul kalam technological university have signed an mou for conducting an innovative entrepreneurial development training project for disabled youth in which state will this project be implemented so here guys if you know that where is this university located you have already scored well in this question because it is kerala the university is in kerala and the project will be launched in kerala itself okay now one more thing that i wanted to highlight that is this national institute of speech and hearing it is in the news okay and it is one of the prominent institutions so please remember where is it located okay so as far as the news is concerned again the news is very evident from the question itself that an mou has been signed uh, basically it's uh, uh, it's a kind of collaboration wherein both the apj abdul kalam technological university and noida based institution both of them are going to conduct the programs so that the skill development of the disabled physically disabled or physically challenged youth can be done in, done in the state of kerala that is the basic news now there is an additional information to the news as well that the kerala development and innovation uh, strategic council had in 2019 only launched the i Y W D project and it is basically a platform for the skill development of the disabled youth. Okay, disabled or yeah, physically challenged youth. Okay. Next question is with which country has India recently signed an MOU for parliamentary cooperation? So here, Mozambique is the right answer. Recently, the delegation from Mozambique has visited India. and during that visit this mou has been signed so who are the signatories one is lok sabha speaker om birla and from mozambique uh, you can say mozambique assembly's speaker asparenka lorinda francisco nuhana bias obviously it's a very tough name you cannot remember this long name so what you can do is just remember the first word because what kind of question can be framed out of this now let me tell you that the question would be that esperanca lorinda and so and so bias 
has visited India. This person belongs to which country or which country was represented by the parliamentary designation led by this person. So clearly the question is there from this name itself. So do remember that she led the delegation of Mozambique to India and there these two countries signed the MOU for cooperation in the parliamentary affairs. Okay. Now here are uh, certain facts related to Mozambique like the president is Philip Nusi and the language that is spoken in Mozambique is Portuguese. Now in my opinion I have given you certain very crucial facts. It's my right to expect two answers from you as well. Capital and currency of Mozambique. Do tell me in the comment section. Now guys this is Mozambique okay and this is India. So it would be really appreciable on your part if you can remember the countries sharing the boundaries with Mozambique because nowadays again the RBI, SEBI and NABAD you can say particularly RBI has shifted its focus from just the fact to the concept okay. So if you can remember the countries surrounding the uh, Mozambique then it would be good for you, you would be on a safer side. Moving ahead, which country has conducted the Han Kuang exercise in July 2022? So this exercise was conducted uh, by Taiwan. Okay, it's a military exercise done by Taiwan. And where is Taiwan? So this is, uh, guys, your Taiwan. And this is your Hainan island of China. China's naval base is located on this island only. Okay, so these are the information that you can remember. Next is, what is India's rank in the expat uh, insider 2022 rankings? So India's rank is 36. Now, I know those who have been following current affairs for a, uh, for a month or so, for a year or for a long period of time, let's say, they would find it a little weird. What kind of ranking is this? Yes, it was new to me as well because Prior to this, I haven't seen such a ranking, expat rankings. So let me first tell you what is it all about, what's the purpose of it. So basically this ranking uh, assesses countries on the basis of the ease of living that the countries provide to the expatriates. Expatriates are, as in the diaspora, the people who are the uh, immigrants who are coming from other countries, okay. So on the basis of that, the rankings are given and India has ranked at the 36th place, no need to be so happy because the total number of countries are only 52. So out of 52, we, have, we are ranked at the 36th position, okay. Mexico is at the top and uh, you have India at the 36th position. Now why is Mexico at the top when it does not offer that kind of economic opportunity that a stronger economic country, stronger economy would provide. Now guys, here we are talking about the ease of living, okay, not about economy. So as far as the ease of living, as far as the accumulation of private wealth, settling in, all of these aspects from a diaspora's point of view are concerned, Mexico stands at the first position and India is at the 36th uh, position primarily because of the quality of life, not specifically in terms of the uh, economic uh, economics, it is specifically in terms of the environment. The air pollution, it is very lethal in India. So because of that, the quality of life is poor in India and that is why the rank is there. Okay, Kuwait is at the bottom. It might not offer that kind of uh, welcoming, welcome gesture to the expatriates. And I have already told you the basis of this ranking. And guys, this is the rankings for all the countries. Okay? Moving ahead, what is the forecast of electricity demand in India in 2022 by the electricity market report July 2022 update? So guys, this is the report released by the International Energy Agency, where the headquarter of this agency is, this is again your question, tell me the headquarters. Okay. As far as this report is concerned, so according to this report, in 2022, India will have 7% of electricity demand, okay? Why so? Because of the heat waves. We are seeing the temperature going up. And if you are a resident of Delhi, then you will know that 
साल में छह सीजन होता है बट वी आर फेसिंग थ्री सीजन इन जस्ट वन डे कभी बारिश है कभी धूप है कभी ह्यूमस है कुछ भी चल रहा है इंडिया दिल्ली में स्पेशली सो बिकॉज ऑफ द हीट वे दी एनर्जी कंजम्पन हैज गॉन अप एंड इट इज एज्यूम्ड दैट इट विल फर्दर गो अप टू सेवन परसेंट ओके सो वॉट इज द ग्लोबल सिनारी Since it is the electricity market report, so obviously it will revolve around the demand of the electricity. So, what is the electricity demand in 2021? The forecast we are talking about, not the exact. Okay, and remember we are talking about this calendar year of 2022. So, the electricity demand will be 2.4 percent, as against the stronger demand in 2021, which was 6 percent. Okay, so this shows us the uh, you can say the slow pace of the economic growth in the world okay so the economic growth has slowed down then uh, slow economic growth is there higher energy prices because russia has invaded ukraine russia uh, is one of the major supply suppliers of the natural gas and petroleum also so after this invasion the uh, energy markets and the wheat markets are facing huge prices so because of this invasion energy prices have gone up and again we have the supply chain constraints because of again the health emergencies emerging in different countries like we have monkey pox coming up in various countries we have again the reemergence of covid-19 in china so all of this is making the supply chain more and more vulnerable and again food prices everything is going up and here we are talking about energy particularly so these are the reasons for the low demand of electricity in 2022 okay so we talked about the natural gas getting costlier because of the russia ukraine war so what is the alternative the alternative is coal so coal is very lethal to the environment but still we do not have that much options therefore the countries are shifting to the coal and i would not say shifting coal was already there but they are using more and more coal the potential of their shift from the coal to another resource has narrowed down that is what is happening now so renewables are growing faster than the demand and replacing fossil fuels at 10% demand in 2022 this is a really good uh, i would say news for all of us okay electricity sector emissions are set to decline by slightly 2% in 2022 again uh, i would say good news for us as far as india's scenario is concerned 7% demand in 2022 and next year we are going to have 5% demand next question is with which education startup has national skill development corporation partnered for encouraging the skill development in india so here law sikho is the education platform with which bnsdc has part now this law sikho platform is going to provide the digital skills the digital training to the youth or the people from not only youth uh, but people from the tier 2 and tier 3 cities small towns and villages and approximately 10000 learners will be covered in 3 years that is the basic uh, agenda behind this partnership saras is the asset resolution platform of which bank again a very important question and i would like to draw your attention to the fact that banks related news are of utmost importance for all of you because you are the banking aspirants so keep track of the new initiatives launched by different banks so here the right answer is union bank of india what is the tagline of this bank and where is its head office your task is this tell me in the comment section even if you don't feel like typing the answer don't do that just search the answer of the questions that i ask you in the course of this video because it will help you in strengthening your facts okay coming back to this news so sarav st stands for stressed asset recovery automated solution this is the full form and this much is the news okay through this platform union bank of india is going to uh, uh, is going to resolve its bad assets that is the basic idea in order to resolve the bad assets the national asset reconstruction company limited has been established by the government of india can any one of you tell me that in this year how much stressed assets 
will be resolved by this entity how what is the target of uh, stress asset resolution or npa resolution of this company this is your next question do tell me and this is a very significant question can be asked in the examination okay next question is which section of the company is act 2013 details about the corporate social responsibility so here section 135 is the right answer it is not just for the sebi students this question is i would say very basic can be asked in your rb and nabard as well why because it's a part of the current affairs what is the current affair then the current affairs is um, that ministry of corporate affairs has announced that if a company spend money on the har ghar tiranga campaign that money will be counted as the money uh, or the expenditure on csr okay so that is the new circular uh, and in light of that news it is very important for you to know that which section of the company is at provide the details of this csr and what is the eligibility okay what is the uh, you can say compulsion for the companies for csr for having the csr so if the company has a net worth of rupees 5 crores or more turn or turnover of 1000 crore or a net profit of 5 crore any one of these three requirements if a company is fulfilling any one of these three requirements that company needs to constitute a csr committee and this is said by the section 135 sub section 1 okay so such questions guys are asked in the examination that why i'm going into too much of this thing okay so i hope that this is clear now it's time for me to wind up the session i hope you all have enjoyed it and if there is any feedback you all are welcome to mention it in the comment section below thank you so much for watching this video